My dearly beloved in Christ, we read in today's gospel of a wonderful miracle by which our Lord restored both hearing to a man who was deaf and also speech to the same man who was dumb. But what really sticks out in this gospel is the manner in which our Lord performed this double cure, putting his fingers into the man's ears and spitting, touching his finger to saliva, touching the man's tongue and restoring hearing and speech in this manner. And so the question comes up, why did our Lord do so? Why did he make use of this means? He could have just simply said, may you be cured. And immediately the man would have been cured. But again, he resorted to this unique method of restoring hearing and speech to this man. And perhaps our Lord did so for the purpose of appealing to the senses, the sight and hearing of those who witnessed the miracle. Because after all, we are creatures composed of body and soul. We are affected by what we perceive by our senses. And thus, we see the wisdom of Holy Mother Church surrounding the sacraments, for example, with various ceremonies, a various ritual. And even the sacraments themselves are composed of an outward sign instituted by Christ to give grace. That outward sign, in turn, is composed of two things, of matter and form. So to take, for example, the sacrament of baptism, the matter is the pouring of water. And the words, the form rather, are the words spoken when the water is poured. And it is those words, that form, that gives meaning to the pouring of the water. So we have an outward sign with each of the seven sacraments. And this outward sign symbolizes what takes place interiorly. Because primarily, the sacrament is something interior. It is a channel of God's grace to the soul. And the sacraments are wonderful. Institutions of our Lord by which we obtain the graces we need to work out our salvation. So our Lord instituted the sacraments in such a way that there would be this external sign to influence again our faith, our understanding of what takes place interiorly. Again, we are human beings. We are composed of body and soul and again are affected by what we see, what we perceive with our senses. And because of this, Holy Mother Church in her wisdom has provided the various sacramentals. We have statues, we have pictures, stations of the cross, statues in our churches, rosaries and scapulars, and other sacramentals. And you know there was a heresy a little over a thousand years ago, perhaps in the 8th century or thereabouts, called iconoclasm. And this was a heresy that taught that it is forbidden to make use of statues and pictures. And so these heretics went around breaking the statues and the pictures and destroying them. So they were called iconoclasts, that is, breakers of the icons, the images. And they thought this is a, some sort of idolatry. And of course, that heresy was condemned by Holy Mother Church. But that heresy continues in our day among Protestants who believe that we Catholics are guilty of violating the first commandment by making use of statues and holy pictures. They fail to realize, perhaps, that Catholics are not idolatrous. We don't believe that a statue has an intrinsic spiritual value. It's made of plaster or wood or stone. But we are influenced by what we see. And by having beautiful statues, 
we are reminded of the persons in heaven to whom we are praying. So the statues, the holy pictures, remind us of Jesus, Mary, and the saints. And we are praying to them, not to the wood or the painting or the particular sacramental. Indeed, if a Catholic believed that that statue or picture had some intrinsic spiritual value, that would be wrong. That would be superstitious or even idolatrous. Of course, Protestants will point to the first commandment. And have you ever read the entire first commandment as contained in the book of Exodus in the Old Testament? I am the Lord thy God, thou shalt not have strange gods before me. But then the rest of it is, thou shalt not make any graven images, nor shalt thou adore them, etc. And so Protestants will say, well, see, God says, don't make any graven images. But what he meant was, don't make an image out of stone or wood or any other material for the purpose of worshiping it as the Jewish people fell into idolatry by worshiping the golden calf. If that was to be taken literally to not make any graven images, that means you could not make silverware or cups or bowls or plates to eat with. You couldn't make anything. And so Protestants foolishly misinterpret it. In fact, God himself commanded the construction of the Ark of the Covenant the table of incense, the table of showbreads, the altar of sacrifice, and so forth. And when the people were being afflicted because of their rebellion with the bites of the poisonous serpents, God commanded Moses to make the brazen serpent and raise it up aloft so that the people could look upon it and be cured. Something that symbolized or foreshadowed our Lord being raised up on the cross dying for our redemption. So we must remember the purpose of the beautiful statues that we have in our churches and in our homes, the crucifix, the holy pictures, to remind us of the persons to whom we are praying, because we are human beings and we are influenced by what we see. But they have no intrinsic spiritual value. The blessing from using sacramentals comes from the faith and the piety of the one who makes use of the sacramental and the blessing of the church when that object is blessed. And that brings up another important point, and that is to make certain that your sacramentals are blessed, to have your scapulars, your rosaries, your various medals and sacramentals blessed by a priest having the blessing of Holy Mother Church placed upon these objects. So sacramentals are very valuable. They are not nearly as efficacious as sacraments because the sacraments contain grace. But sacramentals are means of actual grace because of the blessing of the church and the piety of the person who makes use of them. So let us make use of the sacramentals. Holy water, a very important sacramental. We all should have holy water in our homes and make use of this wonderful sacramental. So we are human beings. We are affected by what we see. And that is why we surround ourselves with the beauty of Catholic art. It is not idolatrous. It is not superstitious. But rather, it is an acknowledgement that as human beings, we're affected by this beauty and our hearts are lifted up to God, to whom we pray, that he will grant us his grace to work out our salvation. And we are reminded of the wonderful saints, models who went before us and have shown us how to live, that we must live for eternity and not for this life. Saints who remind us of what really matters in life, and that is the salvation of our immortal soul compared with which everything else is as nothing. All that really matters is the eternal salvation of immortal souls. So these are thoughts that come to us when we reflect upon this wonderful miracle reported in today's gospel, where our Lord made use of 
this ceremony or ritual, we might say, of touching the man's tongue, putting his fingers into his ears to cure him, reminding us of why we have the various rituals, sacramentals, and other things that appeal to the senses to help us pray, to lift up our hearts to God, and to honor Almighty God, the saints to whom we pray for the graces we need to work out our salvation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.